general concept for using MAMP. So it's download, install MAMP, download, unzip WordPress, use PHP my admin to create a database add your site to htdocs access your site at http colon localhost slash whatever <laughs> the name of your folder is in htdocs so this is uh, there's obviously a lot of little details and that was what we, were, what we were doing a moment ago, more of the details. But we ended up with a site, which we then made a copy of in Duplicator. Let's say you have that folder and you want to do this at home. Well, okay, at home, I need to download MAMP, I need to install MAMP, I need to create a database, and then we can bring the site back to life. We'll, we'll do that right now together, actually, because these concepts you would do them the first time you install the site or subsequent times that you want to bring your site back to life if you're moving it from place to place I mean like right here you worked on it in here if you want to take it back home to work on it we're gonna to need to do some of those steps if we're going to take this site and move it over to GoDaddy or Bluehost or whatever we need to do some of these steps as well so the way we'll do this to get to get a good handle on it is so I'll bring this screen back in a moment, but let's do this. Close, close everything, everything. Get back to MAMP over here, but close everything. Any windows, any web browsers, anything, just close everything so we go back to MAMP like that. And then as a matter of fact, go up to the MAMP menu and click exit as well. So we're gonna do this completely clean or completely fresh. So just close everything so we can see how we would do this with a brand new you know, if we were doing this at home, if I'm not there to help you how to do it, this is the process that you would need to do. And obviously I'm recording this and making notes, but here's what we need to do. So I've closed everything back here. At home. So I've already downloaded, I've already installed MAMP. Okay, check, but I need to run MAMP. So I just asked you to close it, but okay, let's turn it on one more time. Let's go back to MAMP right over there. Just to confirm that when it turns on, it needs to activate those icons and they need to become green. Okay, I need... It's, it's kind of in either order, actually. I wrote over here, um, create a database, add your site to docs. You can do these at any point that you want, actually, one or the other, but then this last one, of course, is the last one. So at some point I need to create a data database, at some need point I need to copy my folder to htdocs. It doesn't matter the order, but you need to do them both. Let's say that we will do first the database, just like I've got in my notes. From here, does anyone remember, how do I go access PHP my admin? Open web start page. Perfect, open web start page, yep. And tools. tools. And then PHP my admin, there we go. So let's go ahead and do that. Click the open the start page. This is our start page. This is localhost slash map web address. And up on tools, PHE my admin. I still have my previous database, but imagine it didn't exist. Or imagine I want to have multiple websites. Every website needs its own database. Okay, how do I create a database on this screen? Databases. Databases. Yep. Two ways, actually. I could also click that new button on the left, which does the same thing as going to databases. And you cannot use the same name of a database that already exists. I already created one previously called My Site. So this time, let's give it a different name. Maybe the full name of your, of your website, or maybe um, something else. I'll call it Kitty. Again, it doesn't matter what this database is called. No one will actually see it. It's behind the scenes, but every website needs its own database. So go ahead and create it. And then on the left side, you will see that it says you've got a brand new database called whatever. Mine's called Kitty.
that was over here. Um, use phpMyAdmin to create a database. Add your site to htdocs. Okay, your site is that one that I asked you to create right there on the desktop. That one that has that one that has inside of it, it should have it should have the zip file which has all of your files and everything and the database and then the installer file which is the process to resurrect it your whole site is is this so if in my notes I'm saying add your site to htdocs that's the next step where is htdocs walk me through that file manager file manager yep windows explorer yep c drive c drive MAMP. MAMP. Uh, HT Docs. HT Docs. So my note is add your site to HT Docs. There's already a site there that we worked on earlier. Again, imagine that I'm working on seven clients' websites. All of the all of them have their own folder. And this is a new client that I just landed. So this folder, we'll better copy it into HT Docs. Just drag it over here, htdocs. <coughs> My notes, lastly, access your site at http localhost slash whatever. The whatever part is the name of your folder. So whatever you call your folder is where you access it. So back to the web browser. http colon slash slash localhost. Slash the name of my folder, which I named my folder this way. I write the year first, and then the month, and then the date. Whatever you call your folder um, is what you type up on the address up here. Press Enter. So that will show. Um, I'm accessing this folder. There's no real website yet because it's still zipped up. You're not going to unzip that folder. You're not going to double click that PHP file. You're, you're not going to do anything out here on the Explorer window, the file manager. You're doing it here through the web browser. Through the web browser, I'm going to click the installer PHP file. And we'll get this nice pretty interface that will step us through actually bringing the site back to life. So again, think about it like your, your site was completely ready, but then we compressed it. Um, you know how like, like ramen noodles, you can't eat them until you add the water and you, and you heat them up, right? This is what we're doing right here. We're, we're cooking the site back up again. We're rehydrating it. It got all compressed and then now we're bringing it back. So over here, you just have to say, OK, I've read the, the terms and such. And this is, again, this software always says this. like It's basically saying, you agree to use the website, and you're not going to sue us if you break something. You're going to use our software. You're going to do the thing, and, and you won't hold us responsible. So that's always that, that, what that's about, basically. Turn that on and click Next. So here's where it is, it's extracting it for us. That's why you're not going to extract the zip file yourself. You don't double click it off of your desktop, the installer file. You run it from the browser. It needs to do stuff itself here. And at the top, it says step one of four. Number one, it will be extracted so that all the files come back. And number two, connect to the uh, database and, and so forth. So it's got its own process coming right here. Right here. Can I ask why we had to make a new database? So there's two possible reasons for two different databases. Um, I have the example that my site is already a site that exists, someone else's site, and I'm working with a different site. That's a possibility. If it's only my site that I'm working with over and over, you can work with your original database. It'll save an extra step. But I'm just showing here that sometimes you need to work with different copies of the site. What if I have a version that it works up until a certain 
time that I've designed it, and then now I'm going to do a revamp of it. Well, every website needs its own database. So this new version of the data, this new version of the website, installing it to a new database, a separate one. Okay, duplicator, localhost. Now, here's another reason also. It says here, you're about to connect and remove all existing data. Well, if I've already got a database that exists, maybe I want that, maybe I don't. Maybe I'm going to lose something by using a pre-existing database. So that's something to note there. And localhost, again, it's not on the real internet, so that's normal. It says localhost. New or existing database name. This is the one we created a moment ago. In my case, I called it Kitty. Whatever you called yours is what you're going to type into there. This username and password is still the same from when we created our databases the very first time. It's still root plus root. Didn't you change it? This is, is still the same just to access the database. When you created a username and password, that was to log into WordPress. So right now it's asking us for the name of a, accessing the raw database, not the username and password to log into WordPress. Yes. Question. So what if you have the version on your zip drive and then you want to go home and work on it more? So you create a new data database, but is this going to, you don't want to remove all that, or you want to work with it, don't you? That's sort of the slightly weird thing. That's a good question. Like if you want to work on it over and over, it's still fine to do connect and remove because you're just going to be putting like the newest copy of your site back in over and over. Does, does that make sense? Like if I'm working on it here and I take it back home, it's the same website. I'm just adding to it. So I'm just recopying in on the next step. I'm recopying in what I already had. Oh, you're recopying the stuff from the, the, the previous database onto this new database. Yeah. Yeah, this is just it's kind just, of warning you in terms of, be careful, you're about to save to this database. Whoops, I'm saving it onto the wrong client's database. Oh, so you don't overwrite somebody else's database. Oh, yeah. That's what that's for. Okay. yeah, so I, in, in these years of experience, when <laughs> one time, when something happens wrong one time, especially with a paying client, you want to make sure it never happens again. So by having separate databases, you are guaranteed that you're not overwriting any other person's data. So to... To confirm this, there's a test. This will confirm, did you type the name of your database properly? Did you type in the, the password for accessing the database properly? Click on test. If it gives you any sort of errors, of course, whoops, I mistyped the name of my database, put the wrong uh, password. So once it says, yep, you, we found your database, the password seems to work, we can click next. It'll just do one more confirmation, and it just gives you one more scary warning here. Warning, be sure these databases parameters are correct. Entering the wrong info will overwrite an existing. Make sure you have backups. In our case, if we're only working with one site always, that's not a big deal. It's the same site that I'm re recreating over and over. I'm working on, I'm adding to it over and over. It's the same one. But if you're working with multiple sites, multiple clients, multiple versions, you want to keep track that you're dealing with the right thing. So click OK. And so in that brand new database earlier, the one that I called Kitty, which was empty a little while ago, now it's full of all of the stuff that I had uh, made on my other database. I've transferred it over. And here it says, if you were moving this from like victorsbakery.com into victorsbakery.org, we can change some of that, not necessary. Nothing's really necessary, really, to change here. It's kind of informational, but if we were moving it from one server to another on the real internet, we might change something. Uh, you can just click Next. Um, one final notice is down here. Everything seems good. No errors in transferring and so forth. Great. Just click Admin Login. Now it's asking you to log in. Now here is the part that, yes, this is the one that we created. This is the username and the password that we did, that, that we were able to s select ourselves. And after we 
log back in, it just says, okay, your whole transfer, the resuscitation of your website is, is complete. On a high level look at this, in my htdocs folder, I have two websites. They're both exactly the same because I haven't made any changes. But I've got two different websites, one in WordPress folder, one in 2019-0702. I've got two web addresses, technically. I've got my website um, here, and I've also got it over here. I've got two different websites because they're in two separate folders with two different databases. In our case right now, that's the case here because I, we did it twice. When you go home, if you want to continue to work on this website at home, and I recommend you do because we're going to, again, get into the aspects about e-commerce and so forth starting next week, um, we need to, you need to be able to do this. You need to be able to download man, install it, create the database. We did it twice for the practice. We've got a, one website in one folder, one, one website in another, and I can access them separately. They're two separate sites. They're both exactly the same, the same login, the same password, the same design, but they are two separate sites because they're in two separate folders, two separate databases. Question? So then, um, since they're two separate sites, then that's, that's the reason why we created the other thing? The other database. Yeah. yeah. So then have the data, the database. Exactly. Over here on the PHP My Admin screen, this is our, a list of all my databases. There were already some that existed, but we created oh. at the beginning of the day my site. So that's that's one site there. And a little while ago, we created the second one right there. So, yeah, right here, MAMP is is handling the two databases, keeping them separate. Uh, when we went through the various installation processes, we said one site is on Kitty and one site is on my site. And they're separate, yeah. Okay. So the, um, this process, again, the, this is kind of technical and honestly uh, a little complicated the first time you do it, but we did it twice together. I'm recording it. Um, I have the various simplified version of the notes, but again, looking back at it, this is what we did a moment ago. So that should make sense. Then, in terms of, and I already closed it, um, that's your, that's going to be your in class assignment. Um, let me get back to Canvas again to show you that. Get back into Canvas. In Canvas, we have here week four uh, graded assignment due by today before you leave. After the lecture, show the instructor you can do this. And the way we're going to confirm that you can do this is I'm going to ask us to play musical chairs. Everyone's going to get up and sit at a different computer that you're not sitting at because I want you to do it from the beginning because obviously right now we all did it together it's done let me show you teacher let me turn it in no you're going to get up and you're going to go to a different computer and you're going to do these steps and show you that you can do it and you have from now until uh, four so you have uh, do we take our thumb drives over there or do we don't yeah just move down. over move over to a brand new computer Alright. Alright. We need music. Yeah, music. Yeah. Do we um do we delete the map? Yeah. Turn off the computer. It'll delete itself. Yeah, just from your computer. Um you can take your flash drive out and everything, turn off your computer, switch to some other computer. And um and you'll need to do these items here. These notes that I wrote here. Is it useful if I print these out? Would anyone like a printout of this? It's kind of really basic, but would anyone like a printout of this? This is, this is basically this, in other words. Right. 